Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. I'm so glad you came over to our channel today. And if you are new to my channel, I want to introduce myself. My name is Teresa. Welcome to my channel everybody and happy holidays. In today's video, I'm going to show y'all some projects that I worked on this week that I'm going to implement into my home for the Christmas season. This is a great time to get caught up on maybe some projects that you have just put off. This is a great time to get those out, start working on them because I love Christmas time and I love just kind of decorating as I go. That's the whole fun of the holiday season. So I hope y'all enjoy the video today. I hope you get lots of inspiration and ideas for your home for the Christmas season. If you haven't joined my Facebook Home Decor page, I'd love for you to go over and join it. And also, go over and join and follow me over on Pinterest and Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love for you to. And also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. Thanks so much. Okay, the first project, I'm going to show you how we can transform some little angel ornaments. I know y'all have seen these. These have been around for a long time. I picked up three of these at a yard sale one day. I didn't pay hardly anything for them. And um, I just, basically, I spray painted them white. And then I went over them with a little bit of white chalk paint. And I'm showing you here, you can distress them. One I distressed and one I just left, you know, plain white. But I want to show you how easy it is to add transfers to just about anything these are small but you know you can just add a little bit of detail to them so this is out of the traditional pots um, transfer pad and I just took some of the little quotes that was in there and then I'm just going to scrape them on and whether you have a smooth surface or a rough surface this is what I love about transfers they will go down on just about anything you just put it down and you know just use your little scraper and get it you know adhere to your base Okay, in the next project, I'm going to show y'all how to make a really easy wreath because y'all know I'm not a wreath maker, but you just want to take a great fine wreath and usually you can find these pretty inexpensive. Sometimes you can look up on them at thrift stores. Just take whatever greenery that you want to, you know, display in your home around the Christmas season. And I love like cedars and greenery like this. I guess it's more like an evergreen. And I just kind of made a swag out of it. I tied it together in the middle with two of them with some twine and then I'm just going to tie it on to my grapevine wreath. Now I'm going to show you how we can make like an easy little banner to go across it. And you can use this little banner on your wreath to add just a little detail or you can even put these around your chairs. So many things we could probably do with these. But I just stenciled on the word Christmas and I featured this stencil in my last video and I will have it linked below but it's an Etsy purchase. But I just used part of the stencil and you'll see me in, a pro in another project in this video later on and I will show you the whole stencil. But you just basically just want to fold over your edges. I'm going to glue them down just to make a smooth, um, you know, just make it smooth on the ends and on the back. And then you've got like this nice little banner. Now I'm going to add some ties to it. And I'm just going to use some, some um, um, stained flower sack cloth that I have. You can use, you know, any kind of fabric you want. Or you could even make your drop cloth piece with your Christmas on it you can even make it longer and then it's just one piece and you can tie it in the back because basically what you want is you kind of want a banner and like I say you can tie these onto things so now I'm just going to tie it center up my Christmas in the center of the wreath and then I'm just going to tie it on the back 
and just show you how easy that was and that just added just a little bit more detail to our wreath now i'm going to show you how i make bows and i'm going to make a really pretty little rustic farmhouse bow for the wreath this is some really pretty ribbon that i purchased at big lots and i'm going to make two bows i'm going to put them together i'm going to make one that's a little bit smaller loop and one that'll be larger and then i'm going to layer them i usually do three loops and this is wired ribbon so it's going to hold its shape really well and it is the same pattern on both sides so you really don't have to twist this ribbon you just want to gather it and cinch it in the center and then you just kind of want to you know tie it off on the back with like a pipe cleaner or you know just a little uh, um, I don't know um, a little bread um, tie thing whatever you have on hand and then you just kind of want to fluff it out and shape it you know good and you want to cut that tail off because I'm going to show you how I do my tails at the end so I'm now I'm going to make one that's a little bit bigger and you saw I measured just to make sure my buffalo print is a little bit bigger than the little bow that's going to go in the front and I'll do the same thing I'll just take that little twisty tie and I'll cinch it in the center and then I'm just going to you know uh, twist it really tight on the back and then again cut that little tail off and then you just kind of want to you know fluff, fluff out your loops now you can make your bows bigger you can do six loops if you want but I'm just going to go with three now this is how I do my tails I just cut a couple strips off of each of the ribbons and then I'm just going to attach them on the back of the two two bows and then that way you know you've got your tails And just to cover up the center, you can just fold over a piece of the ribbon and then just hot glue it down. And then that way it covers up your pop cleaner, whatever you've got holding it in the center. Now I'm going to glue it on to my wreath. I'm going to use a little bit of glue and just kind of, you know, put it in the center. Now you can add to this wreath. You could put pine cones on it. You know, you could add more greenery to it. You could put some holly berries. But I just put this really pretty little Santa ornament that I picked up at uh, Walmart. He was like $1.98. So I just kind of added him just to give him a little bit more of that rustic look. And I love old vintage Santas too. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make the banner again, but I'm going to show you a longer version because I'm going to put this on something else. I just took two pieces of drop cloth. I cut them down to the width that I wanted, and I'm making this one really long. And I actually glued two pieces of drop cloth together in the center. But I could have just used one piece and cut it really long, but I just I thought it gave it more of a rustic look. This is the little um, stencil I was telling you about. I'm just using that part that says Christmas. And I also, I washed this drop cloth in the wash machine and dried it and gave it that frayed look. So that way, you know, you, it'll give you that little frayed edge look and then you can just trim it up when you get it out and now you can tie this on anything you want. Like I say, you can put this on wreaths, you can put this on chairs, around your baskets. Just, you know, the sky's the limit on this. But it's just an easy piece to make that adds so much Christmas detail to your decor and it's so inexpensive and it's so easy to make. Now I'm going to show you how to make some really easy and inexpensive coffee filter trays. Now these are inspired by bottle brush trays. I love bottle brush trays and I usually pick them up wherever I see them. But I just took some coffee filters. I dipped them in some uh, leftover coffee to stain them. I did about 60. There's about 10 in each of these stacks. I set them up and I let them dry. It was cold here that day so I actually I put them in my car. It was a sunny day and I just put them up in the dash of my car on a garden 
garbage bag and let them dry. Once they're dry, and then I just took a wood slice I had on hand. We drilled a little hole in the bottom, and then I just stuck a, a skewer. This is just a pack of skewers I picked up at Dollar Tree, and I just hot glued it down in that little hole. Also, to make the hole in your little wood slice or your base, you could also just take a nail and hammer a nail down in it just to get, you know, just a little bit of a groove, and then your skewer will probably stick down in it with some hot glue. But you just want to start putting your coffee filters on you your skewer stick and you just want to start shaping them and fluffing them just to form a tree and then as you go up and you're shaping it and forming it you want to kind of stagger now and make it a little bit smaller as it goes up so i'm just cutting probably about a half inch off the edge of my coffee filters i just fold them in half and i just cut some and now i'm just going to slide those down on the skewer stick and then i'm just going to scrunch them up and like i say you know the bottom you want fuller and then as you go up the top you just want to keep it staggered and make it smaller as it goes to the top and you just want to keep doing the same thing until you get to the top of your skewer stick and then once you get to the top uh, with your coffee filters and you've got it totally covered then you just want to adhere it you know just um, stick a little dab of glue at the top just to hold that one last filter down and that's all it is and these turned out so cute now if you don't want to stain your coffee filters there's so there's other options out there they actually have brown coffee filters i found these at walmart so they're already kind of brown and stained for you now these aren't going to be as scrunched up as the ones that i've wet with the coffee they're going to be a little bit you know of a, a smoother texture so you're going to have to scrunch them up a little bit more now this i'm going to have to start stacking staggering them a little bit earlier because they're not as, as scrunchy but I took one inch off of these and I'm going to work with the one inch until I, I feel like I need to stagger it some more and make it a little bit you know smaller and like I say you just work with it you shape it as you go up and then I'll cut some more off and if you need to cut more than an inch off you can you know go down to a half an inch so and then once you get to the top you do the same thing you just dab a little glue on it for the topper and I made um I also made a white one these were so easy and so quick to make and y'all I, I probably used between 40 to 50 coffee filters on each tray and I think one pack of coffee filters I think you get 100 to 150 so you can make several trays out of a pack of coffee filters Okay, the next project is going to be really a trash to treasure, but I'm going to tell y'all, if y'all see furniture on the side of the road and you don't necessarily love the furniture, check out its feet. <laughs> this is not my picture. That picture was one that I just downloaded to give you an idea of things that you may see on the side of the road you may not be interested in, but they've got great feet. One morning, me and Ben were going for our morning walk, and one of our neighbors had thrown out a chair and an ottoman. It had been sitting out in the rain, and the trash was coming that day. So I said, hey, let's get the feet off of that ottoman. So you can see it just had screws in it. So basically, we just twisted it and screwed it off of the ottoman, and I got four. The chair had four, but the, the chair was a little bit harder for us to get to, so we didn't get it off the chair. But just an idea before you pitch out old furniture or put it in the trash or you see some in the trash, look at the feed on it and see if you can get those off. Because now the two smaller ones, I got four of those at a yard sale and I paid two dollars each. But the larger ones, like I say, they're trash. They're free. So I just um, chalk painted them. I distressed them with some sandpaper. And I'm going to show y'all. My friend Jackie sent me a whole box of goodies. And she always tells me I've got you some stuff. Some new stuff coming in the mail. I hope you love it. Jackie takes care of me. She is so sweet. I'm going to link her shop down below. And she offers y'all 10% off of your purchases. So she has sent me some more transfer book books. So I am loving all my transfers. So I want to use them. And I'm having so much fun with them so i added some to these little wooden feet and i'm going to link the transfer pads that i'm using in this video down below in my description box so if you want to order some you'll know the ones that i've been using
Okay, now I want to show y'all some more fun I'm having with the transfers. Now, this was a cedar chest that was my dad's. I've had it for many years, and a couple of years ago, I decided to paint it. I did not have my YouTube channel at the time, but I taught painted it, and I distressed it. I've always felt like it needed something for the front. Well, now that we have transfers in our life... <laughs> It is the perfect thing, and I've gotten one, and I'm going to put it down in the description box. It comes on a sheet, but it had this really large um, ad on it, and I loved it, and I thought, there is somewhere special this is going to go one day, and sure enough, I just thought the other day, I thought, you know what? It will look great on my dad's cedar chest, so I applied it. Now, y'all, this one takes a little bit of elbow grease, but just be patient with it. You apply it down and just, you know, put it on like you do a normal transfer and you just keep going over it with your little scraper tool until you've got it all applied, you know, to your base. And I think this just was just the, it, the perfect touch to just really bring out this little cedar chest and give it a little more of a little shabby chic look. And I think it looks really pretty style with a little coffee filter trays. The next project is another kind of trash to treasure. Way back a few months ago, I, I had an ice cream bucket and I painted it. And this is the bucket that was in, in the ice cream um, wooden bucket. And I've saved it and I set it outside so it could get some natural rusted patina on it. Now I'm taking one of these traditional pots. There's a whole sheet that is white. So if you've got a chalkboard or a, white, a black background these white transfers are going to look amazing so i want to try one of these out so i thought it would be perfect to put on our little ice cream bucket and i'm just going to do the same thing i'm just going over it with my little scraper tool i'm going to apply it down to the little bucket and this is going to make a great little decor piece you know you can put your christmas trees in this or you know like i say i just kind of want to introduce y'all and show y'all these little white decals Let's go outside We can hang out on the beach without freezing Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling Now, the next project I'm going to show you is going to be another little bucket, but I'm going to use some decoupage paper, and this is my first time to use this, and Jackie sent me this in, in my package of goodies, and this is just a sheet of Christmas um, um, kind of, uh, you know, decals, and there's tons of little vintage Santas on this, and I love it. I'm taking my DIY liquid patina. I'm going to apply it to the base of my bucket. And then you just want, I'm just going over the area that my, my decal, my de decoupage paper is going to go over. So I've just kind of put it on there. I got it in the, the area that I needed it. And then I'm just going to go over the top of it with my sponge brush with more of the liquid patina. And then just kind of work it down, any kind of air bubbles. And this is going to give you a crinkle effect. So it's going to kind of look like it's kind of aged, which I love it kind of gives it more of that vintage vibe and I'm going to go over the top of it and seal it down with the DIY liquid patina and then I'm just going to go around and going to clean up the edges of the bucket with a little baby wipe and that's all there is to it and this was so easy to do and I think this turned out so pretty so if you're interested in this Christmas decoupage paper for your projects I'm going to have it linked down below also
Now I'm going to show y'all how to update this little suitcase. I had a sweet viewer that sent me a box of things that she said I would have fun making over. And so I'm just now getting around to different projects. But I love little suitcases, especially around Christmas time, because you seem like you always have little things you need to store just to keep on hand around the Christmas season, like little gift tags and bows or just Christmas cards, your stationery, you know, all kinds of little things. So I spray paint painted the little case and now I'm got, I've got this great this is called brocant this is one of the new iron orchid transfer pads and I absolutely love this one there is so many great graphics in this but I'm going to take about three I'm going to do three graphics out of this and the one that I'm going to put on the front of the suitcase is going to be this little um little age rustic uh, clock face i'm going to put that on the front it's going to be a little tricky because i got that latch but like i told y'all transfers will will adhere to just about anything so i'm going to end up i'm going to cut this part off i'm going to i'm you know i'm kind of working with it to see how i want to lay it out on the top and what's going to work and what's not and i'm, I'm kind of thinking about this handle so but when, in the end i'm going to going to go with that bottom section and i'm not going to do that wording that's kind of curved i'm just going to leave that off and um and i'm going to go with this wording at the at the bottom i'm going to put it on and then i'm going to use another decal out of my transfer book and i'm going to put it at the top so, and that's the thing about these transfer pads. You can take from any of the pads, you know, pair them together. You can put, you know, just if you feel like your, your piece needs something else, just look through your books and you can always find something else to pair them with. So, I think this little emblem, I'm not sure what this is, but it come out of the same brocant um, pad. And I'm just going to cut it out and I'm going to put it at the top of my wording. And, um. And I think this little suitcase turned out so cute in the end. Um, like I say, I'm just using different graphics for my book because I love playing with, with transfers and they're so easy. You just use your little scraper tool and hear them down. And then, you know, you've got a great, um, I don't know, they just add so much detail to your decor pieces. And that is the clock face on the front. And I actually got it on that latch, believe it or not. So I'm just going to add some lace um, and some little jingle bells to this and I'll style it for you and let's just give you some inspiration and ideas of how you can decorate with it. y'all it's toward the end of the video and y'all know what that means it's time for me to tell y'all goodbye again until my next video and i always love reading my comments but i had one viewer that she commented that she always hated the when it come to the end of my videos and i had to say goodbye well you know what i do too but god willing i'll be back next week with a whole brand new video and i'm working on a christmas home tour y'all so stay tuned for that I'm going to link all the products that I used in today's video down in my description box. So if you're interested in anything I used today that you want to get, you know, to use during the holiday season on your projects, or just a lot of these can be used year round. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. And as always, I love y'all so much and thank y'all so much for watching and supporting my channel. Happy holidays, y'all.